Welcome to Chatting with the Captain. I am the Captain RG3 coming at you with some freaking legit, like real, real rock stars. Today, tonight, we got real freaking rock stars, man. I mean, this is finally, finally, I'm vindicated. No, None of this tween wave freaking Indo bullshit crap that you guys are all playing we got some real rock and rollers here. We're going to talk freaking stories, tattoos, you name it. We're, we're, we're getting into some, some hardcore rock and roll and crypto. And it's going to be with our, our buddy, Trevor Sarver, and uh, the one, the only, the legend, the seven string freaking wonder of the world, Brian Head Welch. It's going to be cool. So real quick, I'm going to say hello to everybody in the uh, chat room. Ahoy to you all. Look at man, we got some we got some cool peeps in here tonight. Uh, let's see who's in here. D'Artagnan, what's up, dude? First first one in. Completion fails. Alan Hackett, look at you guys. I'm not going to get into it too much because I got to bring my guests on. Sandy Beach, always here, to, you know, supporting the show. Appreciate you guys. So I'm I'm Nardo. Look at you guys. T T Bird, Swearworks. Oh, my favorites. All my favorites are in here. Guys, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna start ripping it up now. I ain't even gonna wait any longer. I can't I can't contain myself. The, the reason I'm late, I didn't hit the freaking wrong button. We were like reminiscing and chatting and having a good time in the green room, and we we didn't start the show. So anyway, without any further ado, everybody, Brian Head Wells from Corn and our own Trevor Sarver. What is happening, guys? How's it going, Brian? Are you, oh, hold on one second. We got you guys. You guys are muted. Let me see. There you go. You're not muted now anymore. Okay. Yeah, What's cool. good, man. Good to connect with you and Trev. Yeah, man. It's good to good to have you here. Good to have you here. What's up, Trev? How you doing? Living somebody's dream, man. Out here in freaking Puerto Rico. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else's dream, not yours. No, I'm just kidding. It's it's beautiful. It's amazing. <laughs> I uh, no, I'm right where you left me last time literally no no let's hey let's do this let's calculate how much the captain would have saved on taxes if he moved to puerto rico oh no let's not do that Please, <laughs> I'm, just not do that. I'm just joking the, yeah. the, the he's wife already, he's put the kibosh on that thing man we were i was trying to get there and uh she we, we went out there one time and she said nope you ain't bringing my 17 year old daughter and my six-year-old son out here sorry oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so I got I got I got uh, the, the the Puerto Rico was circumvented. So anyway, cool man. We get to we get to talk about. Uh, gosh, I don't even know where to start with you guys, um, Trevor. You well, you want to introduce yeah. like what's going on yeah. here as far as your guys' relationship and and um, yeah. why? Yeah, Brian is here even talking to hexagons, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. So. To, to give uh, everyone, <laughs> he's gonna well, he's gonna freeze up. The internet is really kind of weak in Puerto Rico, I guess, huh? Yeah, we. we All right, um... so can you hear? If you, I know you can hear me because I can see you guys now. I bought Starlink and I bought two of them from Elon. You know Elon's thing. Yeah. Yeah, they don't work. They don't work. Anyway, whatever. Uh, no. Me and Brian, we, me and Brian have known each other for for uh, a little over ten years now, I think. And um, you know, uh, we toured together in his band Love and Death. And then, uh, you know, I've started. I I own a merch company, and we, I've done a lot of Brian's merch. And then I'm a crypto nerd, and of course, I got my friend into it. And of course, I got into Hex, and so I was like, "Yo, you got to see this." pulse chain thing and that's whenever um, you know next thing you know i'm dragging brian into like yo dude you should you should really like pay attention to this this is pretty wild stuff man i think it's gonna change the world and and uh and, and here we are and brian thank you seriously like publicly thank you for for uh for number one just being a homie dude and hitting and and, and hooking me up with a favor but for taking care of richard seriously so that was awesome oh, yeah that was cool that was cool but but oh, wait yeah. Brian, tell me about so so when he started like jumping out from behind the bushes and telling you, "Hey, dude, you got to get in this crypto. You're gonna become a millionaire." Da, 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 da. Well, you already are a millionaire, but he's gonna make a million more bucks. What did you think? I mean, were you like, "Oh shit, here we go, one of these things," or what was it? Well, the true story was I was in David's office, my manager, 
and you started asking me about crypto and I was already diving into Ethereum and Bitcoin and some others. That's, yeah. But Trevor turned around uh, months ago and told me about Richard, about, about Hex, about Pulse, about all of it. And it was like, all right, Trev, are you on one? What's going on right now? <laughs> then did, did some more research, you know, and um, realized that uh, it's really in, innovative. And uh, I don't know, it's just, it sat, it sat right with me. And so, you know, jumped in a little bit. I'm spread out, you know, I'm not just on one sector. Though. I'm, I'm spread out pretty much over, over uh, a lot of crypto. But um, so are you too? Me? Um, no, I, you know, I've, I've been in crypto since before Bitcoin even came out. And, and I say that and people are like, oh, no, you couldn't have, Bitcoin was the first thing. No, I was in a gaming industry and they were trying to sell in-game cryptocurrencies back then um, to us because I had a gaming platform. And uh, so I started understanding a little bit about what cryptography was and what, what these currencies were doing. But it didn't make sense to me you know, when Bitcoin came out that they were actually like taking it to, you know, the masses and uh, 2009, 2010 is when they started like getting out of the forums and actually launching it. So it took me till 2014 to actually see this thing and go, oh shit, people are making money on this. You know, so in 2014 I started and then I totally degened. You know, I went like full bore over the edge into every scam coin, thing dark alley and crypto that you can think of you know and uh beat my ass up but i learned a lot over all those years and uh i started looking for a real crypto and i i started to understand what was going on you know like bitcoin was the first it proved a concept but it really it sucked it, it wasn't doing anything it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't stretching the capabilities of what cryptocurrencies could be so Ethereum came out and we were like, okay, well, maybe this is the, 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 the crypto that's going to show everybody what crypto is all about. Well, it was good programming language and it proved another concept that we could program the shit to do stuff, um, but it failed too. So at that point, I had quit messing around with everything else um, and was looking for something real. And that's when I found Richard and I was like, man, this guy knows what he's talking about, you know, and and at that point, I started studying everything he was doing, uh, watched him make Hex from, you know, soup to nuts. He started, you know, talking about it. The project changed names a few different times. Uh, and then it finally came out as Hex. And, you know, I was all in day one on it. And it's, you know, it's changed generations of my family's life because of that. So I come from a different space only because I spent a lot of time learning what crypto is and and 90% of the stuff out there is bullshit. And the rest of it is just helping to prove concepts. And Richard's actually putting those things into play. So that's that's where I'm at with it. Um, you know, so that's why I'm, you know, fully vest, invested into, you know, just what Richard Hart has put out. And not because of him and not because I'm plebbing on him or following him or whatever. But it's because I've been in this space a long time and I've seen all the crap that's come out. And I just know that what he's done is just going to blow the, the lid off of this whole thing. Nobody's ever seen any of this stuff that he's launched. So that's where I'm at with it. That's awesome. Yeah. It's been a hell of a journey too, man. It's been a hell of a journey. So, so, so you found out about Hex how long ago? How long ago was this when you first started hearing about it and Richard and all that? Um, what was it like January, Trev? Yeah, it was, it was about January. It was not that long ago. Also so just this year then. All right, cool. Yeah. yeah. And it was, when, it was right after uh, the pulse chain sacrifice. Yeah. Or, or it was right after the pulse chain sacrifice or before the pulse or after the pulse X before pulse X after pulse chain. Yes. Somewhere exactly. in there. Yeah. And I was just like, dude, you got to see this thing. And it's like this weird thing where you like lock up your cash and then you, you just get extra. <laughs> like, I don't really know how else to put it. And Airdrops then, are sick, man. I mean, yeah. the whole, the whole thing, the free money thing is just sick. I mean, yeah, I, I I can't believe that, you know, people don't see this for what it is. There's so many airdrops and so much free money out there. And Richard says it all the time. Go get your free money. Go get your free money. They're giving this stuff away. And I don't know if that's always going to be the case, 
but that's where we're at today. So it's like, take advantage of that stuff while it's here, you know, cause you don't know how long until all of this starts to slow down or, or change, but there's yeah. lots of free money out there. Yeah. Yeah. It's wild, man. Yeah. Well, I'm pretty new, bro. I'm like end of 2020 beginning of 21, you know? So I'm one of the, I'm one of the new ones, but if you think about where it's going, I'm pretty damn early, I think. Yeah. It, it, it it is still early in the crypto game. I mean, it's been out for 12 years, so it's really not early, but the good stuff is early. Um, like yeah. like I, the percentage of where of people that's going to come in eventually. Yeah, so it's, there's three percent you know? of the world, three four percent of the world actually is involved in crypto. That's that's nothing, you know. Right. I mean, yeah, and with with everything that's coming out with Pulse Chain, I, I I genuinely believe it. Like if you're if you're if you sacrifice for Pulse. Uh, Pulse X or Pulse. I mean, you're, you're going to experience some serious, <laughs> some wild rides. Yeah. So, I mean, to put it in perspective, like growth wise, like the internet was like one of the fastest growing things on the planet. I think it was growing at, uh, what did they say? 40% or something. And crypto is growing at over a hundred percent increase every year right now. So it's yeah. growing faster than the internet grew. There's 140 million wallets. I think in 2024, they'll say there'll be a billion wallets at the rate it's growing right now. So crazy. in the next couple of years, we're, we're like in hyper acceleration mode in, in this crypto game. So it's it's really ca catching on. I mean, people who aren't in crypto have heard of crypto or have heard of Bitcoin. It's it's the word is out now. I mean, it's not just some fringe tech geeky thing. People are now with the with the advent of all these apps like you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Robin hood and all these things, people are understanding what investing in, in crypto is. Cause they're, they're, even though it may not be real crypto, uh, they still know, and they're still, they're still dabbling in it. So it, the world's going to know pretty soon, man. And it's, yeah, we're early. We're early. Right on. Yeah, dude, it's, it's, a, I think it, it's kind of wild when you, when you see how many participants are in hex right now <laughs> that al alone it's tells you early it's nothing it's nothing you know yeah, it's not the, if there's three percent in the world and then we're we're like not even one percent of all crypto i mean mm -hmm. it's and but we're growing because here's here's what's stood the test of time is you know when hex came out it was like i mean it was all out war dude they were after us. They came at us sideways from everywhere. Like you guys are scammers. You guys are bullshitters. You guys don't know what you're talking about. You guys are getting people wrecked, have fun, staying poor, all this crap. And we, we took that for like a year straight when we first launched, it was just hammering us, hammering Richard. You know, everyone was calling him a scammer. Everyone that got on stream with him. I mean, literally there was this, this guy, uh, Peter McCormick, the little asshole, he came up and, and all he did the whole time was say, you're a scammer. You're a scammer. The guy had no argument, nothing, just said, you're a scammer. You're a scammer. And Richard's getting like what? frustrated with this guy. And that's, and that's cool. all this dude did, you know? So for a year, we just got drilled. And then as the bull market came, nobody paid attention to us. It's like, oh, those are those loud mouth freaking hexagon guys. You know, they're just, they're just crazy, blah, blah, blah. And uh, then the bear market came, the scams came. Celsius got wrecked. They all started getting wrecked and uh, we're still standing. So we were able to just, you know, screw you guys, man. We're, 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 we're still here. And now everything that you did got everybody hurt and we're the only ones standing without a scam. And now we're pumping and it's, it, it's a beautiful thing because we're, we are now in, in the front of uh, all of crypto. We're, we're we're the community that is shine that you, we're, we're shining brighter than everything else because we haven't we haven't gotten scammed out. So yeah. that's it, dude. That's what shows like it's a test of time. You know, it's like people can talk smack. You know, you know my story. I've done some crazy things where people are like, "What?" And um, at the end of the day. You just got to look within yourself and let the test of time prove everyone wrong because yeah. people are going to talk smack no matter what. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you're always going to have haters. If you're doing something, you're going to have haters. And yeah, and they get once that snowball effect comes, the hater snowball effect. 
and it's like building more and more and more, that's a good sign that you're going in the right direction, you know? Yeah. <laughs> they've been, they've been after us for a while. I mean, we, we got so much shade and we got so much, we got so popular from people coming at us. And I mean, the Hexkins went to war on Twitter and, and in YouTube. I mean, we were literally in all out war with all of crypto. And uh, when, when it all came out in the wash, we were, we were such an exciting community that people just would just steer clear of us because we just destroy them everywhere we went. And then people came and said, Hey, we want to do a movie about you guys. So they literally, they, they made a movie about the community, Richard and the community. And so there's a, there's a documentary coming out at the end of the year about the Hex community. It's just pretty That's going to be so good, man, because it's going to show all the haters that were <laughs> so wrong, you know? And so I you know, see that. I, you know, what's crazy is, you know, I'm, I'm sure you've seen it on Twitter that Richard is uh, apparently possibly in the United States and possibly might, might be dropping in on some, to be a special guest on a special YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. He's, He's he's here, I guess. So he's hanging out with his mom, fixing toilets. Yeah, apparently I saw that on Instagram. <laughs> he's putting a bidet in his mom's toilet. <laughs> dude, I got my first one here at the house in the, in uh, Puerto Rico, man. You know, those things, dude. Don't don't play around. Wait, once you go bidet, you never go back, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, dude. I'm just saying. Yeah, before that, you know, it was, uh, and I still preach about it, man. Wet wipes. If you don't use wet wipes, you're you're a freak. Oh, yeah. dude, you're a freak. Dude wipes suck, bro. Dude wipes are the worst <laughs> wet wipes ever. It's like if you're gonna make a freaking wet wipe for dudes, let it be thick. They are. They are. Like, they are so, yeah. 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 Uh, dude, if there's one thing, all right. So people watch, and I'm sure people are are curious about the porn stuff or whatever. But let me tell you what. What it's like to tour with Brian. Brian doesn't like germs. Okay, I know that much. You don't like germs, <laughs> dude. I remember sharing. You just always looking so just, just trying to be so fresh. And we're always on the road. And we shared a bus. And dude, my band, we'd hop on the bus after our set. We'd be stinky, smelly, nasty. Oh my gosh, just you don't want to share a bus with us. And then poor Brian and his team are having to deal with our garbage, dude. Oh my god, you dude. Remember? I've been. You know, I'm older than you guys. You you were like 25 at the time or something. And I've been on for 11 years of tours so i've been through the stank stage i've been through the, the go to bed with sweat you know and all drunk and so you know you guys didn't tour on a bus a lot did you was that how many times you tour on a bus you guys were in a van right yeah yeah were you guys really we were in a van. go ahead brian when you guys were when you guys were out in huntington beach Back in the day, you guys were running around in a van. Uh, did we lose him? Oh no, did we lose him? Oh, there, there he is. He's back. Hey guys, you guys yeah. were you guys were running around in a van when you were down at the fifty nine hundred two club, right? Oh yeah, dude, we went on the road. So us and Deftones were. Yeah, I remember that. The Deftones played, and I think Sublime was there that night too. Yeah, and so we were we were still like struggling bands, you know, and we went on a tour with with uh, I think it was a house of pain biohazard tour yeah and i, uh, I remember that one and you know do you know jeff and steve kreeth by any chance no those names okay they were at hb back in the day but uh so we bought like record company gives us you know a certain amount of money to record the record and start and get a, like a tour budget going and so we bought it like a an older winnebago <laughs> and hit the road and about a week into it, it caught on fire and we left it on the side of the freeway, got two vans, tried to finish the tour. We ended up finishing the tour, but we got home and we told um, Immortal Records, Epic Records, we said, if you guys don't get us a tour bus, we're just gonna break up. We're not gonna tour anymore. And they had already invested so much in us. They were like, okay, we're gonna do it. And then everyone started working hard, getting us the tours. We got the Ozzy Osbourne tour, we got the Megadeth tour, we got Dancing tour, Marilyn Manson, and and then it started just the sales started growing because they knew that we had a we had an energetic live show that was we were we were Dude, unique. You guys were sick, man. I mean, Thank you came you. out, you had a gas mask on, you were all bent over, like couldn't even see you, and. <laughs> and Freaking Jonathan looked crazy. I mean, that, you know, the 5902 is a cool club. 
and uh, you guys tore that freaking place up that night, man. That were was... you like, were, were you, were you wondering what the hell was going on when he comes out? Like one time he's wearing a skirt and then he has back. Yeah, he comes out with his freaking his cut off shirt and stuff. I'm like, who the fuck is this freak, right? And yep. then, uh, it was, it was, and then you guys freaking just rocked it, man. And that that seven string sound that you guys got, dude. That like for me, that revolutionized rock and roll for me, you know, because I was. I was an old school, you know, grunge guy, punk rocker from the past. Like I, I grew up in Long Beach, you know, Huntington Beach area, all the old punk clubs, the Fender's Fabulous Ballroom, the Olympic Auditorium, you know, Fear and 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 then local bands, all of the Jody Foster's Army from up your guys' way and all, all that stuff. And and when you guys came and you you guys ripped that seven string, man, I was like fucking blown away, man. You you, you, you guys were – that was something else, man. It was a whole – where did you come up with that sound, man? I, I appreciate you saying that, man. Uh, we uh, – I, I always give all credit to uh, James Monkey. They Monkey. call him in our band. And he was a big Steve Vai fan. And yeah, yeah. Steve Vai invented the seven string with Ibanez. And it just didn't sell well because Steve – I think well, I think it did, it did it first and then kind of tapered off. But uh, – Steve is like a shredders guitar player, you know, like he's, he's very, very well respected, but for the masses, um, they needed someone like, like us to grab it and to do something innovative, like brand new and be very innovative with it. And so we, they got me in the band. James had, had, uh, gotten about two seven strings. Our bass player Fieldy switched to five strings because the seven string has a low B string. And yeah, so yeah. the five string bass had the low B string. And so when they're in a band called LAPD, they, they, they got the seven string and the five string bass and, but they weren't writing songs. Like their sound wasn't based on that low, that low string. And so when I got in the band, every song we wrote from then on was all, all low seven string. Every song was just like, it was lower tuned than, you know, Alice in Chains and Helmet. Yeah, and yeah, you I got down know. there. Yeah, it was just like spaghetti, spaghetti rock, man. <laughs> that thing <laughs> was just so low, man, and it was badass, man. I loved it. I loved it. But it had a groove too, right? So yeah, it yeah, yeah. So low yeah. that it was like death metal. It was like no. It had a it had an energy and a vibe and and a hop to it because oh it yeah. Was, once we saw Rage Against the Machine and bands like that would get the crowd hopping, all we wanted to do is get our our crowd hopping and moshing, and you know, and that was it. And so, I, re- I retired about a month ago. So I went I went out to the mosh pit. I took my my daughter to go see um, Fear. Actually, that's what really, was. yeah. So I go to see Fear down here, and, and I was down in Long Beach, and. Uh, and so I decided, okay, I'm going in the pit. This is it. The old man's getting in there. Now I'm 55. And uh, so I went in there and, and started, you know, yucking it up. And and uh, I I even went reverse on these kids. And I was just going at it and uh, stayed in there all night and then paid for it for the next four days. I could hardly even walk the next four days. It was so bad. So I'm like, that's, that's what it. happens when I try to drink. <laughs> the hangover is like four days. I can't do it. I'm 52. I'm right. I'm right underneath you, bro. Yeah, man. No, I I gave the I gave the drinking and the drug thing up a long time ago, man. You know what? It's it's funny because right, like in in '93 when you guys were getting started, banging around in Huntington Beach and stuff. Um, you know, I I had my last uh, my last overdose in uh, in '94, and that's when I sobered up, and. Uh, you guys and when you guys started coming out with your music in like 95 because i had i had like left hollywood because i was working at at k-rock at the radio station back then and you know i love that whole scene so much but i had to get away from it because it was it was fucking killing me so when i got away from it um you know i had this this period of time where i like dove into who i was and getting cleaned up and all that kind of stuff uh but then i had to go to work and like real regular work work you know and um when i did so um i was a truck driver i moved heavy equipment i was a millwright they call it but at the time i was just driving a truck and and learning the the trade 
but you guys and your new music and and I was listening to you guys. You guys were like my rage freaking um, release because right. I hated people telling me what to do and uh, I was working for the man and all this crap, you know. But I'd get in my truck and I'd just freaking blast your guys' shit. And then when every once in a while I'd get mad and I'd put blind on the on the radio because we didn't have cell phones back then. We have radio and then put blind on there so they could hear your guys' shit, you know, over the radio and everybody in the company would hear. It. Come on. I'm serious, bro. You guys like got me through a period of time when I was I was just in rage mode and I'd just be able to get in my truck and turn you guys on and I loved it, man. That seven string guitar did something to me. It did. It was like it was like I needed that sound, you know. It was it was freaking awesome. That's so crazy. I never I never uh I don't Trevor told me that we had a connection, but I didn't know it went that deep and that that means a lot, man. That's it's yeah, crazy. No, you guys, full circle, you know? Yeah, and then and and then again, like like years later, you know, here I am in this I'm in suburbia now, raising kids and you know, everything's changed completely from where I was. Um but then I hear through friends of mine because we, you know, we have the, you, you, you know, that there's a church out here uh, called Crossroads and all the skaters and rock stars and everything from this area, they all go to there. And I heard that you were, you were circling around our, our churches and stuff. So I was like, oh man, I got to get down there and, and, and catch that cat. But never did. I never did get to catch you, but I think you were down there a few times. I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. At least once. Um, so uh, did you ever I mean, who would have thought, huh? How where you are now, from being the angry truck driver working for the man, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you know, before that was just a gutter tramp. You know, just you, you know, Huntington Beach is and and that whole scene out there, and and they uh, call it Sodom and Gomorrah. Some people. It, yeah, it's and and I lived right in the middle. I lived on Seventeenth and Olive, so it was, it was you know, drinking all day, drugging all night surfing early in the morning, puking out in the water, um, catching a few waves, coming back to sleep and then doing it all over again. And just a continuous cycle of that crap. Yeah. I never got you guys, man. You surfers that could freaking drink all day and drug all night and then (laughs) surf in the, in the morning. I guess we had to, (laughs) you never went to sleep, right? You just like went straight from the drugging to the surfing, right? Yeah. But it, it like, it like cleared your mind, you know, you'd go out there and we'd all go puke, you know, you you paddle out and then you puke after you get past the lineup and then you paddle in and then you catch a few waves, come back, crash out for a little bit and then boom, back at it. That was like, it was like a, it was like a hangover cure. <laughs> wow. Uh, I was, I was never athletic. So, uh, so I never was like the surfing type. I did. I went through a phase and I was decent on a longboard, but then I, when I fell into drugs, I, I got away from anything healthy, like surfing or working out or anything like that. So. Yeah. It, it, it does that to you, huh? Yep. <laughs> Makes you forget about everything that's good in your life. I know. Crazy. Yep. Yep. Well, so, uh, a, 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 a side question. Yeah. Are you, so, are you involved deeply in in pulse and pulse chain and pulse X, or are you just hex? Oh yeah. No, no, no. I'm I'm deep in into pulse and deep into pulse X, and okay. uh, um, I made significant investments. So I've I've delayed gratification. So so when we all got into hex, you know, we we had to we, we had to figure out how to use, you know, at first we all said, okay, we're going to buy this thing. I'm going to put it out there for this first year while we're launching it. And then I'm going to collect my winnings. and I'm going to run, you know, that was kind of like the whole first thoughts of everybody. And then as we started to unpeel the onion and understand what hex is all about, then, um, we decided that, uh, um, you know, we were going to, um, do this thing right. So we all started staking. We started staking longer. We started staking, um, uh, uh, making, making hex work for us. So, so our whole mindset changed on what it was. So as we, as we started to understand what hex was, we had to delay gratification for a couple more years. It's like, okay, well, I got to push my stakes out further because now I'm making more, making more hex by staking it out. And then we understood what hex was about. And then as we all started to like, finally start to reap some of the rewards of waiting for two years, um, Richard came out with pulse and pulse X and it was like, well, you know what? I'm not going to spend this either. So Richard ended up making us all give us, 
give him our money back because we all sacrificed for Pulse and Pulse X. So, right. I mean, we didn't give back to Richard, but we put it back into um, the projects that were coming out because, you know, he, he, he proved himself uh, who he was and what he was trying to do. And, and really what he's trying to do is make the world a better place financially. Um, and, and, and it's real at its core, that's what Hex does is it changes finance. It changes inflation models. It changes savings models and CD models. And every, every financial product that's out there in the bank can't hold a candle to what Hex is going to do because of it being programmed to be better money. I mean, that's what it is. It's, you know, Ethereum proved that we could program cryptocurrencies to do something. And Richard said, well, why has nobody made this stuff do the right thing? And we're like, well, you, you do it. And he did. And <laughs> son of a bitch, man, here we are. And, and it's still hundred percent uptime doing exactly what he said it was going to do, doing exactly what we all figured it out to do too, because we literally in depth got into this thing. Like this is, you know, this is this part of hex, this part of hex t- shares inflation model, the whole thing. We, we just said it could do this. It could do that. It could do this. And it, all of those things that we discovered it has done. And that just means that what we've called the future to be on hex is what's coming. So it's like, hell yeah, you want to be all in on this thing because it's coming and there ain't nothing they can do about it. I mean, it, it, it is a, it's going to be a freight train in this next bull run, this next bull run. People aren't even going to, going to know what hit them when hex comes out on pulse chain. It's going to be absolutely freaking crazy, crazy. Yeah. Um, let me ask you this. Like, what is, what's the strategy as far as like, you know, you you went all back into pulse and whatnot. And so, yeah. Is it a balance of like taking care of your personal needs? Obviously it is. And house and cars and, and kids yeah. and that and, yeah, you know, I I have always preached this to everybody in in crypto is that this is the most volatile asset on the planet. And but it's the most lucrative too. But it has 80 and 90% dips. And we've seen that throughout the years. It does it all the time. So I've always warned everybody, be careful how you get into this thing, you know? Um you got to you got to make sure that your, your obligations um, to your family and to yourself and to your living conditions and your risk tolerance and all that is, is right. You know, my, my crypto holdings were only 10% of, of my, my wealth when I got in and the money that I used, that's all it was. I did not push in a bunch of my money and my properties and all the things that I've gathered over the years. I would never do that. And I got a family. I can't, I can't put them at that kind of risk. That'd be like me sticking a needle in my arm again or something, you know? So I was like, I'm not doing that. So what I did was I just made sure that I I kept that 10% and I've continuously told people, you got to be careful. You got to make sure that your risk tolerance. Now, younger people, they've got a lot more risk tolerance. You know, they got a, they got a bunch more years that they can screw things up or whatever, but guys like me and you, man, I mean, we're like, we're, we're over the, over the hill. Like, okay, it's, it's time to figure out what life's going to look like. And I mean, I'm sure, you know, you're fine, but you know, um, a lot of people aren't and they're our age and they're, 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 they're betting the the house on it, you know, and, and it's not, uh, it's not a good thing. People need to really, really watch their risk tolerance and and know what the space does because it dips 90%. And, and we're, we're in a dip like that right now. Now I know it's coming back. When is Hex going to go down 90%? It's nowhere near 90% since the all-time high, right? Yeah, we're we're at about a – I think we're at an 80-something percent dip right now. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. yeah, right now we're at a big dip. I mean, we were at 54 cents. Now we're at a nickel. You know, we went all the way down to almost two cents. Yeah, so, the whole the whole thing is that it's 90% off right now. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah it's, a big, it's a big bargain right now. And, and this is the time for people to buy, people to get in, uh, people to understand, you know, what's going on here hold on one second uh oh, shit was that up just got home and stoked to see you guys on the stream this is our our buddy far out aliens real cool cat man i just got off phone with him today he's one of our one of our friends thanks oh. for the five 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 buddy by the way that's the if you don't know brian that's the um that's the longest you could stake for is five 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 
We oh, okay. Pacho. Yeah, I heard Pacho that. Pacho Cinco. Yeah. So, uh, but you're, hey, you're to go back. You're more than ten um, percent now. Well, because it's now because it's like it's like you know because of the the gains, it's like ninety percent of my wealth now. You know, right, I mean? right, right, right. Because it's overshadowed everything that I've owned my whole life here. So, um, yeah, it's it's ninety percent of my wealth. But you know, I'm as I'm coming out, as I'm starting to what they call you know dollar cost average out of your position, um, doing it in a in a you know the the whales and 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 the sharks and the the big dolphins they need to um, be responsible and accountable to the system itself. Uh, so people with big bags, you know, you, you you don't get to just go in and and steal all the jelly beans out of the jar from from everybody else, you know. And right. they do, people do. Uh, but if you're a good custodian of the of the uh, the project here in the ecosystem, uh, then you're you're dollar costing out to your needs, you know, Got it. Got it. Yeah. And, and then, and then, you know, moving them into other assets, trusts, um, properties, uh, you know, things that you want to invest in, um, in, in my, in my world anyway, that's what I'm doing. And that's what I, you know, try and teach people like, Hey, get out there and, and, uh, you know, don't be all in crypto because, uh, these, the, you never know if you're going to survive these dips, you know, you don't want to put yourself in a spot where you can't survive these dips. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that would be cool. That one day that uh, my gains get so so much that it makes my my uh, royalties for t- thirty years of music look like ten percent. <laughs> <laughs> the Come on. <laughs> yeah. So so is that how do, how does that work? You get you get paid like every month, every year, every six months. How how does that work for royalties and stuff? Oh gosh, there's so many different ways that it's. I mean, you got your inner uh, online royalties that come in, and then you have your music, um, the writing portion, and then the publishing portion, and then um, you do sometimes you do a publishing deal to get you know up money in advance, and then so there's all kinds of different ways to do it. Um, I prefer, I like to just wait for it to trickle in, you know. But you know what's going on a lot right now is this. It's uh, I forget the the organization, but I think they're in the UK and they're just paying like twenty times what everything is worth that you own. So a lot of people are selling all of their all of their catalog. I mean, wow. I remember Offspring did it for like they got like thirty million. It was you know it was public and everything. Um, I hear like artists like. Uh, uh, what's that guy's name? Uh, his name's Ryan. He, uh, one, I was going to say One Direction. No. One Republic. One Republic. Thank you, Trevor. I think he sold his for a couple of hundred million, you know. And so wow. so there, there's that option, too. But then you get into, like, Masters, bro. It's like when you saw us in, in 93 at 5902, you know, we got a record deal. We recorded the Blind album. Yeah. So what happens is you sell your your master, you sell the ownership of that away because you're a young band and you don't have any leverage to be able to like, you know, no, we want to own our music. They'll be like, okay, we're not going to sign you. Then you have no, you have nothing right now. We're going to get you out there to the world. So you sign your your rights away. Well, as as you start to get bigger, you have more leverage to be able to to do the deals with them. And so later on, later records, we own all of the masters. So, you know, there's things that we could do with that. Um, not a lot of them, just to be quite honest, there's, there's only a few, but there's supposed to be a clause in the industry where after 30 years or something, you, your masters come back to you. Oh, so, we're hoping we're, we're researching that with uh, uh amazing lawyer right now. And uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of this. It's, I don't understand it all. Honestly, Trevor, you, you've dealt with publishing. Before. Well, it's, it's, it's so confusing. I, the, all I know is that essentially what you're doing is you're selling your future at that point. Like, and I, and I don't mean that like a bad thing at all, Jason. So me, Brian and Jason are kind of like the three amigos, homies. Jason plays in Breaking Benjamin, and he's also a very notable writer in the rock community. Yeah. And he's 
considering or not considering, I'm not going to speak for him, but we've talked, I've just picked his brain, but essentially uh, he knows some guys where hedge funds have come in and been like, Hey, here you go. Here's 20 million bucks for your catalog. Thank you very much. And then from now on, they own the whole catalog and then just go flip it for 40 mil, you know, over the next 10 to 15 years worth of radio play. Who do they know? I don't know what they're going to do with the stuff, but my honest opinion is I would take the money and run. <laughs> right there because you can put it into, into crypto or whatever, you know, yeah. real estate you can invest in. So, but uh, yeah. these guys are like, these companies are buying these royalties and they have to wait 18, 20 years to break even, but they're doing it for the longevity of the, they're yeah. thinking. But you got to remember people are doing that too, man, with the housing market. I just sold my house in Nashville and I sold it at a three X. That's a lot. Bro, of you sold at the perfect time. I can't I literally sell. I got three houses in the market. Dude, <laughs> I'm not even joking. I sold the top. This is my RA. J probably. It's a hard thing. And I did it by accident. <laughs> no, dude, I did. It. I literally sold the top on the week. The very next week, it started coming down. Crazy. But all that, we're not gonna get into that. But like, like if you think about it, where are we going with this? Oh, the catalog thing. Like, you know, uh, you're able to, uh, uh, you know, cash out and 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 come back later if you want or whatever. I don't know. I'm a big proponent of taking whatever someone's gonna give you at the top because the popularity is at the beginning, right? It's not the end. So if it's popular right now to sell your catalog and there's hedge funds paying 20 million bucks for it, yo, let, let's let's meet, let's meet. Because you're not gonna pay that in five years. I know they're not gonna pay that. And, but it's like, oh, I was mentioning my house. This It was an investment company. They bought my house and they paid it at a three X and they paid the top and they're still gonna make money because Excel doesn't lie and you just run it over the course of time. And you'll make your money back, so, you know. So that's how they're doing. So. Crazy. Crazy, cool. Yeah, it's freaking so, nuts. People, people want porn NFTs, by the way, Brian. Yeah, well, I want to. You know what? I want to talk. I, we we keep talking about corn, of course. I mean, that obviously that's what made made you famous. So let's talk. Let's 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 talk about your new band, Love and Death, a little bit. Um, and that's you and Monkey, right? No, that's. Uh, we can go ahead and. Uh, mm -hmm. Wait, let's read this. Every night I sing twist to my children before bed. Well, they're going to need therapy. <laughs> During the Mooch concert scene, the, the new film directed by Jeff Bryan. Comes out by Stein. Oh, that's that's you. So so what's going on there, Brian, is is there's a uh, so we made we made this documentary uh, called The Highest of Stakes and another film crew within the Hexican community. So these guys are Hexicans. They came to us and they said, uh, and by the way, thanks, Alan Thick, Alan Thick, uh, for the ten bucks. Um, but they came to us and said, "Hey, we want to make these guys have made like eh, four, four or five. Like uh, they they make comedies, they make horror comedies. They're 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 um, they're up and coming. These guys are doing really good work. So so I watched some of their movies. They're very cool. They said, "Hey, what we want to do is we want to bring hex awareness through movies." And we want to put let hexagons invest in the movie and get returns. And we want hexagons to actually be in the movies. And um, one of their first things that they want to do is they want to do a a concert scene. So they're going to do this concert scene and all the audience is going to be hexagons and they're all going to have hex hex logos and stuff on their shirts. And they're going to be jamming to a band or whatever. So that that's what somebody was talking about was, uh, hey, let's 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 get uh, head up there and have them play <laughs> during the during the uh the concert for the uh for the new movie oh nice yeah like i said i can't wait to see that movie but uh to answer your question about the love and death that's kind of uh i i toured with that band with trevor and his band the wedding and um you know that was kind of what i was trying to do when i was outside of corn um i honestly came to the conclusion that i don't like to sing and i i love being in corn playing guitar and corn that's what i was created to do i believe it's my purpose and i love it it feels right uh, monkey was not involved with love and death um okay it was like my side thing and uh, i did a record in 2021 um no plans to do anything else right now we're just focusing on corn and uh and crypto and, and sharing my story about like what we're talking about like what you went through you know showing people that you can get out of the dark dungeon yeah um you know there's there's always uh, a, a chance for you to totally change your life in every way. 
I mean, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, physically, financially, there's like every, every one of those areas I just mentioned changed when I was in the darkest, really yep. rich, famous, or, you know, well, not really rich, but you know, a lot of money, a lot of fame, but completely darkened soul with uh, a, a shell with nothing substantial inside. All I had was my guitar and my corn songs and that was not good enough. You know, you know, you, yeah, get, you guys know we've all had money, lost money, got money again. It, it doesn't, it doesn't make you who you are. And money won't right. like, won't, money won't give you peace when you lie down and you're, you're, you know, your money's good, but you're messing up everything else in your life. So, dude, it's pretty wild, man. I, I, I called Brian. I had this, I had this wild epiphany, you know, because, not, not epiphany. I don't know. I don't. It's just a. I don't know, something happened in my life, right? Where I realized I noticed something about myself because I'll give people stuff, you know what I mean? I'll be like, dude, take this, take this. Just just, just take it, just take it. Or I'll, I'll take care of the bill. You know, I pick up the tab. I, I like, I love generosity. And whenever, the way I'm tying this into like the hex thing and crypto and stuff is like, and especially Pulse Chain and the future, you know, potential, uh, you know, uh, just, you know, life changing. Uh, you know, wealth there, whatever. I don't know, man. I remember the day that I called Brian and I was like, bro, come over to the house. Like we kind of lived by one another. And I was like, bro, come over. And I told him, or no, we were, it was before you came over, we were on the phone and I was like, dude, I think I'm like literally put on this earth for philanthropy. Like, I think I might be like, I know that sounds like I'm not trying to be like, oh, a lot of money, blah, blah, blah. Dude, I'm fine. I lived in a van for 10 years, bro. I'm good. <laughs> I can keep doing that. I seriously mean it. But and you were like, dude, you know, one of the greatest things you can do, you encouraged me so much that night, man. Like, as a friend, you were just like, yo, bro, seriously, I've been there on the top, like, had the cash and everything. Like, one of the greatest things you can do is give it away, you know, and bless some other, bless somebody else. And I don't know, man, uh, this, this whole, you know, season, that's what really brought me and Brian together in regards to Pulse Chain because I, I was just like, dude, I really, really – I, I'll go on record and publicly put my name out there and say, I believe it's going to be a great thing. I, I believe it's going to be awesome. Yeah. And, and, and I think that there needs to be an emphasis on, Hey man, dude, if you want to grab your Rolex and all that stuff, dude, hell yeah. Me and Brian, you know, we, we, we goof off and all the time, you know, talking about, you know, maybe our dream car or, or something like that. That's just our friendship, you know, but like truth be told rule number one is give, you know, give dude. Like, seriously, uh, so many people didn't have that knowledge that you had or didn't have the understanding of crypto. I sacrificed for multiple people, um, you know, during the Pulse X thing that they don't even know what's coming. And one day when I drop it over there, I'll be really, really, it'll, trust me, I'll be happier than them. I guarantee you that, you know what I mean? And uh, it's just really cool, man. This whole like wealth idea of money is it has nothing to do with the money, guys. It has nothing thing to do it's like it's a it's a opportunity to, ch to change lives you know what i mean so i uh, my internet went out there but it's just a huge it's a huge opportunity to change people's lives and that balance yeah. of that balance of being generous and giving but also being smart and reinvesting um in, in a wise way so that you can give the rest of your time on this planet and not just give for five years and then <laughs> you know it, have to go so. gotta be responsible in every way and yeah. that's like, like you're saying, RG3, you're saying, you know, getting into crypto and it's like we almost have to learn by getting wrecked, you know, and going through the process of, yeah. of you know, that stuff by, you know, someone can't just tell you their story. And then I, I feel like most people that are really called into this have to go and learn it by getting wrecked, learning, you know, and then yeah. getting over the, the hump. The best thing, the best way to learn is from other people's mistakes, you know, and, and that's what I hope that I bring. Hey, uh, let me throw this up here real quick. It's always nice when we, we got people dropping. Brian, keep speaking the truth. Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. Hey, I, I, I promise that uh, I thought. Thanks for um, hundred bucks, Danny. I promise you that I thought Christ was was a joke because of the all, so many religious people out there. And once I was a drug addict and I tried it for myself and I, I, I found, I got past the religious part of it and got into the real spiritual meat. Um, yep. It changed my life. So thank you for that. And uh, I'm with you there, bro. Not a religious yeah, person. 
I'm a very spiritual Christ follower, not. I don't, yeah. I don't like well, it. I mean, it's it's it, the problem is, is that, you know, your spiritual journey is private and it's personal, you know, and, and of course you, you can share it with others. And I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying is everybody has their own personal walk and how they do it and how they they engage, you know, and uh, that's always been it for me. You know, I have I have my thing. I do my thing and I don't I don't go out there and and uh, and sell it to everybody. Um, but it is my thing that that, like you said, you know, it, it changed my whole life. You know, if yeah. it wasn't for yeah. that. If it wasn't for having that spiritual connection with my creator, um, then I would have never made it through. I would have been back under the bridge and, and dead eventually, like, you know, um, many, many others at that time, like like Bradley. Uh, you know, he died that, that same year I got sober. Really? And, uh, yeah, yeah, he died. He died. We, well, I mean, we, we copped at the same places. I mean, you know, he's he was a local Long Beach dude, and uh, we were all running around in that area at the time. And, right. and uh, that same year I – I, uh, I had my issues um, and I had three heart attacks. So by, by the time I was 20 years old, I was, I was done. And, uh, and, and that year I made it, I got cleaned up and uh, he died that same year. So it was like, man, there, there go I, you know, yeah. but, uh, well, dude, so, it's, it's, you know, if you just keep believing, keep working on yourself, it, it's never over, you know? And, uh, you know, Sublime right now, they're on tour with my friends in Incubus, right? right yeah. Isn't stuff. his boy singing for him now? Or did he... Oh, it's Rome. Rome's doing it, right? Yeah. 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 Those guys are, you know, all those guys are. <laughs> yeah. Dude, this is like, this is a really good question, actually. Hey, Brian, somebody asked you, when did Brian get interested in finance? Ooh. That's a great question, dude. It's a really, really good question. Yeah. You know, when did you get interested in finance? I just, what my dad actually told me about mutual funds. When I got enough money to buy a house with corn, it was uh, about three years into our, our career. Um, and I bought the first house and uh, it was actually Redondo Beach because I got out of HB, bro. I had to leave South Florida. <laughs> I had to, I had to, <laughs> yeah. I did try somewhere else, but my dad told me about mutual funds and I, and, uh, I got into real estate a little bit and I just loved the, the, just the concept of having money and making it grow by investing it. I mean, it's the simplest thing, but you know, I was like, I was the guy that bought the Mitsubishi three years, you know, a couple years into corn while everybody else is getting the best Mercedes they can get. I was like, you know, I've always been, you know, I'm, when I was delivering pizzas for round, round table pizza when I was growing up, you know, I would have like a couple thousand dollars in, in ones in my bedroom because I wouldn't spend it. You know, I'm just that type of person. Um, it really excites me. And, you know, crypto was a little bit scary to me just because of just the, the ups, the high ups. And then the news, all I saw about crypto back in the day was, um, the news and what they talked about, you know, oh, Bitcoin's climbing, it's climbing. Oh, everybody went broke from Bitcoin. So I was like, oh, I'm, I can't get into that. I don't want to go broke. But I had no understanding of what really the cycles were about or anything like that. But yeah, just so getting into finance and stocks and mutual funds and real estate back in the day, probably around 27 years old. And um, and then, uh, yeah, just really seeking out the best way to to just multiply your money, you know, it's just, it's really excites me. It has for many years. Yeah. There isn't a better multiplication tool than crypto. That's for sure. Right. <laughs> and it and levels the playing field because there's so many, the rich keep on getting richer. I feel like crypto, if you think about streaming, bro, streaming for music came in and it makes all these musicians that, couldn't get a record here or couldn't get their music out there. They can get their music out there through YouTube, through streaming services, through all this different uh, means. But I feel like crypto is like that way for finance and for helping the average person gain wealth. And dude, it's just it's, dude, it's, preach. preach. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 no, dude, I love it because, dude, I, oh, that is what crypto is. Like, seriously, RG3, like, think about it, bro. Like, your life is is where would you be without crypto i'd be i'd be out there grinding bro i'd be grinding 
And like, dude, or that's or, what I did for my whole life is I ground. I mean, and, it truly yeah. is. It, 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 it truly does give the give the little guy a chance, man. Like, like it really does. In the little no, guy, it does. I mean, I'm I'm the I'm the product of that. I'm the right? an ultimate blue collar worker. You know, I. I, I I thought I had my chance in Hollywood and radio back in the day, and I blew it because I stuck it in my arm, you know. So I figured I lost my chance. So I punished myself for another 25 years of working out in the field, sweating every day, trading my hours for dollars, making my wife, uh, you know, um, suffer because she had to stay home with the kids, and I had to work, you know, one job just to try and make ends meet here in Southern California. It wasn't an easy deal. And uh, so, so I just grind, I just kept grinding and grinding and I almost was punishing myself for missing my brass ring, but I was always on the side looking for something. I was always trying to get a side hustle. And then when I saw crypto, man, I was like, that might be that thing that pulls me out of this bullshit, you know, out of this freaking life of, I mean, I got eight discs in my back are jacked and gone from my job. Wow. Um, you know, I spent 16 hours, 14 hours a day out in the field. My kids hardly knew me, um, just working. And, and now it's like, okay, now I get to make it up. I'm still young. Um, crypto has retired me, retired generations of my family. Um, and so, yeah, it is that tool that can make that dream happen, that can make that redemption happen for me anyway. Um, and, and it has, and, and it's all because of, all because of hacks, all because of hacks. Come on. So you guys out there that are grinding, man, I'm telling you, we, we got another, we got another bull run coming and uh, you're, you're going to be able to get out of it and you won't just have to sit in your truck and, and punch the, the, the ceiling, and listen to corn. because. That's <laughs> <laughs> so, Hey, check this out. I'll, I'll show you. So here's uh, that's, that's me back in my corn days. No way. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. That is awesome. Yeah, that's that's back in the day, man. It looks like it. you, Brian, in '99. Look, Terrence Trent Darby, bro. Yeah. That was like '98, yeah. right there. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's amazing. That's yeah. So oh man. It, let me ask you, how old are your kids now? Uh, I got a I got a 21 year old. I got a 17 year old daughter that's gonna be the death of me, and then I got a, a six year old boy. We we decided to have one more, you know, and. Uh, so, but that's been fun, man. That's been nothing. Kids are nothing but a joy. You, you got a daughter or two yourself, right? Yeah, definitely. I got my, my daughter's twenty four. She's oh. uh, yeah, you know, she's it, doing good. Did, I'm proud of her. She, um, she's been through a lot. You know, yeah. uh, my well, you being her dad, shit. No, I know, man. It's like this life, dude. This entertainment industry is so hard on families. It's crazy. Yeah. And, and I met her mom in HB in Huntington Beach back in the day. And, you know, she, she passed away last year. And That's right. this yeah. uh, addiction runs on both sides of the family. You know, my daughter's just been so amazing that she's like, doesn't want to fall into that trap. So she's very careful and good, man. I'm really proud of her, man. Good, good. You, you guys made a movie, Loud, Loud Crazy Love or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was on uh, Showtime for a year or so, and uh, it's basically the the uh, it shows what that industry does to families, and we're just one example of many families that just get lost in the constant travel, the, the you know the absent parent, the the alcoholism, drug addiction, yeah. and uh, even the money, bro. It's like money can really mess up, mess people up. Sure. And, Right. It's like, it's you know, you, you, you're talking about generations, your family has changed, you know, crypto or hex has. And it's like, you probably have to work really hard at, at setting your kids up for the future. You're probably into all kinds of learning um, curves, right? Just because dude, I know billionaires and, and their, you know, their kids with some of them have really, it's, it's really affected them negatively. The money. Yeah. I've, I've, I've actually, I, I became aware of that just, just in the last couple of years and, and, uh, tell you a quick story and why I've kind of changed my tone on that. So, so my, my wife's in the kitchen and a package came in for me and it was, it was like the brand new freaking double throwdown trick of the week iPhone, right? It's like, 
you know, $1,500 deal. Right. And, uh, to us, you know, it, you know, before money, that was like a big deal. 1500 bucks for a phone. Oh, we didn't do that. Cause my wife had to put a dime where a dollar was supposed to go every month. You know what I mean? That's, that yeah. was her life. And, uh, so the things on the counter and she's doing her regular thing. I mean, we're, we're in money now. We're, we're all, we're all good. And she's looking at it and go, you bought this. I can't believe you bought this. Why would you buy this thing? You know, she's just doing her regular, you know, what she's used to. And uh, 21 years of marriage, you know, your habits are don't die fast. Right. And uh, my daughter looked at it and uh, she said, what does it matter, mom? We're rich. And my wife came unglued. Like, yeah, she was like, this is not how this family is going to act. And she went. She went absolutely off. I thought, oh boy, this little girl's not going to make it through this one. <laughs> and, uh, and and she lit her up, and she lit me up, and and uh, I was like, you know what? She's right, man. We gotta we gotta start teaching these kids, you know, what this money really means. And back to your 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 point, Trevor. I told I told my kids. I sat them down. I said, look, guys. I said, first of all, you're not rich. I am. And so let's get that straight. And the next thing is, is that, uh, I, I will, I will help you guys with whatever it is you want to do, as long as you go out and do something for the world and do something good, you know? And so think about it long and hard and I'll support that. But other than that, you know, you guys are on your own, you're going to do your own thing. But, uh, if you want to do something good in the world, then I'll, I'll help you. And so, so that's what I've, I've given to my kids is like, Hey, let's go and put some time and effort and money into things that are going to go help the world. Uh, my wife and I started a foundation and, uh, what we're doing is, is my niece, she's, she's a Huntington beach local a gal, like our whole family. We got a lot of family out there. And, uh, she, she is, uh, she's a mother of an autistic child and she's young. She's, she's in her twenties and she, um, now she's advocating for, for parents that have autistic kids and she's going to the fair and setting up uh, sensory deprivation tents and she's opening up a, a facility to help kids in Huntington beach and in a local area with, with autism and parents that need help and assistance because there isn't like a program out there that helps, uh, uh children with autism. Um, they just have to they get kind of get stuck in the system. There's no special schools or something. It's, I didn't realize it was like that, but she's been working real hard. So we've been given to her and, and helping her organization and, uh, and really cool, you know, to be able to do stuff like that, because when it comes down to it, there's no watch or ring or car or big home or boat or anything that makes you feel better than when you give back to somebody, you know, uh, because it's just it's just it's just that that feeling you get, man, is just there's nothing better than, than helping other people. That's it. You know, the scripture said better to give than to receive. And it's like, you know, I feel like receiving is in order to give. Like yeah. uh, Trevor was talking about, you know, and, uh, you know, I just want to tell everybody out there, you know, you just you really have to have your your character, your personality and your foundation secure before this. These big gains come in through crypto. I'm telling you, yes. I've seen it wreck people. I've seen it wreck their personalities I've, and the ruin relationships. And it's and you got to have that 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 focus of giving back, not even just financially. It's like when. Like people are, are coming to you, RG3, and they're like learning, you know, they're holding on to you. You're up here, but they got to have their other arm reach down to, to help others, you know, yeah. bring them up. It's a, it's a two way street, you know, and and if you're not going both ways, then your character is going to get cracked. Your foundation is going to get cracked and you're going to suffer because of it. You know, I've been we've been making money since basically nine, about 96, you know, just the the industry's been very good to us corn has had success and and thank god for the fans you know and so so i've had i've had money i've lost money but i've dealt with uh, large sums of money for for decades and i know how it can mess people up and i'm i'm thankful to say that all of my friends and and most of the bands that we came up with like they've learned that cuz you know with age comes wisdom and whatnot so mm. dude it's yeah. so true it's so true there was um you know i'm i'm pretty open about this whatever i think I've, I've told a few a few people but dude if you want to get for the people watching you know here's the here's the real shit you know there was one time you know i run i i i, I own a merchandising company and uh, we make we do kind of what rg3 is wearing like printed t-shirts you know decorated products and all that kind of stuff and 
uh, did Brian's merch. We do a bunch of different stuff. And I started this company. It kind of started taking off, kind of make a little bit of money here and there. All of a sudden, there's a little stability, a little this and that. And, uh, you know, I'll never forget when Brian, you know, called me one day. New bro, what's up? Just a random call. What's up, dude? I'm like, oh, I'm good, man. Doing this, doing that. Just blah, 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 blah. You know, and Brian was like, bro, listen to me. I've been there. Okay, money, don't let it change you. Don't let it change you, bro. And still this day, that's like, that's when you know, like, man, that dude's a friend. Like, for real. Like, for real, for real. And I'll never forget, it changed my life. Um, dude, I remember, dude, Trevor and the, these guys were kids in the wedding. They were opening for us, and we were on that bus. And you were always doing your hustling. Like, you were, you were smart and go-getter and whatnot, but, like, to see you guys like going to McDonald's every day, that's all you could afford. And all of us actually. And and then see you like years later with this merchandise company, like just growing like leaps and bounds. I was tripping out. And yeah, that's it. That's I tell anybody was, that, that was, I know that, that just, comes into success, dude. It's like I've seen it too many times. It meant it meant the world to me. And I received 110 percent of it and to this day i'm very glad that i did because i know people and have met people and literally got screwed uh not literally <laughs> but like got screwed by one like like i got screwed massively by by someone that uh you know you think you can trust and and money got to their head money got to their head and they took my cut and ran and it was a lot it was it was seven figures and and I'll never forget it, man. And yeah, it's just, it's, it's a crazy dude. We're all, we're all in this rat race. Um, you know, we're all in this rat race for money, but make sure that you're in a rat race to give away a little bit of this money too, because it's going to make you feel better, even if you don't feel like doing it, but it's definitely going to make the other person feel a little bit better. And, you know, that's kind of the, 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 the ethos of hex for me, man, is just giving, you know, it can be the ethos of it can be saving for somebody else, but, that's fine. That's cool because nobody owns hex. Hex is hex. It's code. And for me, it's giving. You know, I, I love to give. So the reason the reason I do what I do um, is, you know, the, the reason I started outreach with the show and bringing the community members in, the smarter community members, because I wasn't the guy that was the smart guy. I wasn't the crypto genius. We've got crypto geniuses in this community. And I just wanted to showcase them and get the word out because – you know, you know, that saying to whom much is given much is expected. Yeah. And, and I thought, you know, Hey, if, if I'm going to be the recipient of this thing, if it's going to pull me out of it, cause man, I got a lot of buddies that are drinking their lives away, sitting on couches, uh, that have worked their lives, you know, away. They're in divorces, they're, they're drunks. They, you know, there's all kinds of stuff going on, um, because of what the world has done or what the world has left for them. And, and I'm not saying that it's not their fault that that they've decided to take that route versus the route that I took. Like, I didn't decide that I was going to sit back and let the world just eat me alive and be mad at it. I was like, I was going to go do something. I was going to find something else. And that's the only reason why I found crypto is because I continued to move forward and try and, you know, make my life better. But these guys that I've watched, that I've worked with and toiled with out, out in the field with, um, they don't deserve anything less than, than what crypto has to offer and what hex has to offer you know they've they've been wrecked every which way to, to sunday because of what you know they've done to our money uh what they've done to our retirement plans you know not all of us can be rock stars and crypto millionaires you know these guys need a tool to get out of the situation that they're in you know yeah. they they work their asses off and their lives away um only to be handed you know hey sorry guys you got you don't have shit you know, find another way to do it because their 401ks are wrecked. Social Security is about to get wrecked. You know, there's not a whole bunch there for them, even though they they did work really, really hard. You know, so I see Hex as that thing like I got to get this to those guys, at least some kind of a hand up. You know what I'm saying? Not a hand out, but a hand up. Like here's a better tool for you to go out and build a retirement plan on because that's what Hex is. It's really like the best retirement plan that you can actually put your money into. If you dollar cost average into hex for 15 years, you know, more than likely you'll be able to retire in 15 years from now if you were doing that. And you'll 
you know, set up your, 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 in, your staking ladder and your income ladder out 15 years, that's a retirement plan. And I'm not talking about a get rich quick one or two years in and out one or one to five years you're in and you get a, you get a pump and you're, you're done. I'm talking a legitimate freaking retirement tool for those guys. And that's what I want to see. I want to see hex brought to the world. So guys like that um, can just, you know, get out of this mess that they're in. And, and I see it, I know it, I lived it. And, uh, you know, I'm, a for, I'm fortunate to be out of it. Um, but what weighs heavy on my heart is these other guys that are out there that don't have a pot to piss in, man. So that's yeah. why I do what I do. Cause I want to get the word out about hex and what it, what it can do. Cool, man. It's, it's easy to kind of be in a toxic environment too, during a bear market, you know, there's not, <laughs> Oh it's just that's just hexagons being hexagons man just you know there there there's some hey you know i was in the marine corps so you when when you when you take a marine out of the field or out of battlefield or and you and you put him in garrison you get this caged up tiger you know and and they do some pretty rotten shit they go out on the weekends and they drink and they fight and they do all kinds of nasty shit in your, your town and destroy, you know, uh, countries and small cities and other countries. And that's what they do. That's, that's kind of how I see the hexagons. Like they've, they've been to battle, they've been to war and now they're in garrison. We're in a bear market and, uh, they just got to have something to do. So unfortunately, right. uh, sometimes we fight ourselves, we get in bar fights and fight ourselves, but when it all comes to, down to it we're all putting our arms around each other and going all right let's get back out there and go do this again so uh that's what i see yes it's toxic yes they're they're idle hands right now but uh hey hexagons gotta be hexagons man dude yeah I, here's the thing i can't wait to see the community and what it's like you know in in, in a bull run i mean it's, it's gotta be just that it's crazy. fun bro it's really really fun when everybody's making money and seeing kumbaya and happy you know it's 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 fun uh, this shit that we're going through right now is not so fun, but I've been through it a few times. We've, we've already seen dips, you know, and, uh, this is what we get. We get infighting, we get stupid shit being done, you know, Twitter wars and all those other stupid crap. Um, it's just part of the game. You know? Is it because they're first time bear market people? Because some of them, some of them. Yeah. Or some of them bet the farm. These are the cycles. I mean, everybody should know it. <laughs> yeah. But some of them bet the farm, you know? Oh. And and they didn't time it right, so they got personal problems because of that, you know. And then they come after people and and make life difficult for others, and and they're pissed off and they're you're know, ranting and raving or whatever, you know. Uh, and that's why, like I said, hey everybody, beware of the bear market, beware of the ninety percent dips, beware of over leveraging yourself, beware of your risk tolerance. Make sure that you're not putting yourself in a position. Don't spend the fucking rent money, you know. Make sure you're good. So, um, some people don't listen and then we get what we get when we got toxicity. So, yeah, yeah. Dude, this stuff's getting crazy. I mean, you know, we talked about it last time, but I don't know. Hopefully we'll see Pulse Chain this year. We'll see. Uh, yeah. Hopefully we see it this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right on guys. Well, we, we've been over, I, I usually do it an hour, but freaking head, man. It's been so cool having you on, man. This is like I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be uh my parents are in California, so I'm gonna head that way. Um so uh I'm gonna I'm gonna build a house out there and oh cool man. I gotta come see you. Yeah, bro. We'll 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 hang out when you come up when you come out. Let me know when you're when you're rolling this way and we'll we'll go kick it somewhere. Go watch some shows or something. Okay. You better come All right, visit guys. Me. Hey, you hang out visit. in the in the uh the green room. There's there's I know that my partner, he's here in the green room. He's going to want to hang out with you guys for a quick second. Just say hey to you. So okay. um, appreciate you coming on. Um, head, hopefully we'll get to talk to you again and bring you on again and do an update once we hit the bull market and see how excited you are about it. Come on. Let's do yeah. it. <laughs> All right, my brother. All right, everybody. Have a good one. Thanks. We'll catch you. Um, I think I'm doing another one tomorrow night. I'll let you know who it's going to be. But uh, tomorrow night, chat with the cabin. And then don't forget the effing hangout on Friday. That's your show. You guys, come on. Come hang out with us. Uh, we'll, we'll catch you all. Um, let's see, where's the, uh, on the next one. See ya.